Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to use GIMP to change a colour of an object in an image. So let's go to our browser. I'm using Google Chrome and in Google Chrome I'm going to type in Unsplash. So I'm going to go to this website where we can get loads of free images to use. I'll click here and I want to search for some type of fruit. So let's look for like a lemon. Yeah? So there's quite a few different images here. And this is kind of like what we want to achieve here. We want to change the color of the fruit, but leave the other ones the same. So let's use this plate one here. This is kind of a good one to look at. We've got loads of fruit on here. So we'll click on the download free, and I'll put a link to this particular image in the YouTube description. And we'll open up this folder and drag and drop this picture into here. We can close down the browser and we'll open up GIMP software. I'm using GIMP 2.10 and we'll drag and drop the picture in here and we'll select keep. Now we can see the image in here. So we want to duplicate this, so we'll right click on the layer and select duplicate layer. So we've got two copies and we'll hide the bottom one and we'll click on this top layer here, so just click on it and then we'll click on the foreground select tool. I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and I want to zoom in on the fruit, right? So I use the mouse wheel to zoom in, so something like this and we'll select around the edge here, like this. And when we get to the end, we just want to join it and you'll see it will go like an orange color and that will make the whole selection. We'll hit the enter key. So hit the enter key on your keyboard and then you'll see the, the picture like this. Basically what's happening here is everything dark blue is going to be ignored you can think of it that way and anything inside of this selection that we've created we just want to highlight with the paintbrush tool exactly what we want to pick out here so we can adjust the size of the paintbrush tool here i'm going to set it to around 100 and then i'm just going to draw but not go over the edge so what you don't want to do is go outside you don't want to go outside you want to stay with inside of the fruit like the inside part so we just draw around here close to the edge but it doesn't have to go all the way to the edge Let's just do that again. So we start up from here. Just take your time. You don't have to go right to the edge. You can get close enough like this. This will be fine. So something like this and you just fill in the middle. It doesn't really matter what colour you use. So it doesn't matter if this is yellow. It can be any colour. It doesn't really matter. And we let go of the mouse and you can see that been selected we'll click the select button here and then you can see the selection around the edge then we'll go to colors and we'll go to saturate we'll go to hue and saturation here <clears throat> and then we'll adjust the hue so we'll bring that and we we'll pick a color like this pinky sort of purple color and we we'll select okay then we'll go to select and none here. Then we'll use the middle mass wheel and we'll move across and maybe we'll pick this fruit at the top here. So we'll use the foreground select tool again and we'll select around the edge one more time. We'll hit the enter key and then we'll select inside of this one as well. Just paint around the edges. Try and get close to the edge, but you don't have to get too close. Something like this. And then just fill in the middle. Then hit the enter key. And then click select here. And then we'll go back to color, hue and saturation. And this time, that one was like a pink purple color. So let's make this like more like a blue. Um, let's try and find a blue color, something like this. We'll click OK. We'll do select none. And then we'll do one more. Let's do this bit here where it's sitting underneath another piece of fruit. So we'll use the foreground select tool again. And we'll go around the edge here. This one's a little bit different, but it's all the same logic. So here, when we get to this position, we need to go around the edge of this 
fruit on top. And then just join it here, It'll go orange color when you overlap the points, click it, hit the enter key, and then we'll paint this one in as well. So <clears throat> let's undo that. If you make a mistake and go over the edge, press Ctrl Z to undo it. Sometimes it's worth doing like a part of it. So let's say if you do all of this bit here, and then just let go of the mouse wheel, the mouse button should I say. So let go of it and then continue because if you make a mistake you can undo that step. So it's worth letting go every so often and then starting again. And that way if you make any mistakes, they're easy to undo. So we just undo that. Let's just make this a bit smaller. It should be okay. We'll hit the enter key and then we do select and then we'll go to color, hue and saturation. And this time maybe we'll make it, let's see, maybe like this purple color. And we'll click okay. And then we do select none. And now let's go and save this. So we'll go to in fact, let's do one other thing. Let's try and change the background color. It's this blue color, right? So let's try and change the background. So we'll use the magic wand tool. Uh, I'm going to set the threshold to around, let's say around, let's try around 90. We'll click inside of here. So it's around 90, 96. We'll, so we're using the magic wand tool here or the fuzzy select tool. We'll click inside here, but set it to around 96. And then we'll go to color, hue, saturation. And let's try and change that to like a, I don't know, let's, what colors can we do? I think red looks quite good, so we leave it at red. So we change the background as well. So let's go to edit, and we do uh, select, so we go to select, none. And let's save this as a GIMP file. So we go file, save as first, and we will save this as, uh, let's just call it colored, Lemons. So we're saving that as a GIMP file. So if we want to come back and edit it later, we've got the original GIMP file now. We save that first. Then we go to File, and we do Export As, and we create a JPEG file. So in here we'll select JPEG, and then we'll give it the same name but .jpeg. Click Export, export this file. We can close that in GIMP now. And we can see our original image on this side, and we can see the new one here, and we can see the color changes. So they both look pretty good. There's a slight error in this selection here. You can see around the edge here, we could have improved that, or we can go over with a paintbrush and recolor it around the edge here. But it's not too bad an effort. Could have spent a bit more time with our selection, it would have been a bit more clean. But you get the general idea of how this is done. So we can easily change the color of the fruit using this technique. So you could have changed all of the colors, right? You could have went through and changed every single slice to be a completely different color. But I quite like these three colors and then the contrast between that and the yellow. We also changed this background color quite easily just to give it a bit of contrast. Okay, so that's how we go about changing the color of an object uh, in an image using GIMP. There's other techniques to this as well, so maybe I'll share some other ones a bit later. But that's just a nice quick one if you want to create some artwork for some projects. You just want to change the colors quite quickly. You can do that. Using that foreground select tool, you could select a face, you could select a hand, you could select anything, right? A building, doesn't matter what it is. As long as you can select around it and create the selection, then you can change the hue and the color that way as well. So it doesn't have to be fruit, it can be any image. So pick any image you want or use the one that I put in the YouTube description, which is this image and give that a go and see how you get on. Okay, hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.